Chapter 54 Dr. Raichi shifted in his chair. Hachiak. Report. Plus 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 energy signature detected location Alfheim. Match record Nemia. Proceeding to intercept plus plus plus. Excellent. ETA? Plus 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 1.75 standard days plus plus plus. He nodded, closing the transmission. A soft exhalation produced a cloud of steam in the cold air of his central chamber. I will never forgive the scions for what they did to us even if God does. 224. Gohan was currently doing push-ups in his quarters in Citadel. 225. Come on Videl why do you always make me do this? I've got to get back to writing. Because if I let you do your own thing you never train, she snapped. You can't just assume that your natural power will always carry you through, you need to keep your skill and stamina up. Come on 250, then you're done. Fei, 226. He grumbled. Gohan. Derry, the nervous older speaker, materialized in the doorway. Come quickly. Gohan stood up, looking at the new arrival. What's the problem? Some kind of large creature has landed a few miles from here. It ignored all attempts to communicate, marching straight toward Citadel, when we used a platoon of drones to block its path it just trampled over them. It looks like it has hostile intentions and it's incredibly strong. Videl nodded, understanding. So your government or whatever want Gohan to stop it? Derry grimaced. Not exactly, it's more of a personal request. The Council is still undertaking a preliminary meeting to assess threat levels and vote on the necessity of an emergency committee. He rolled his eyes as he continued. The emergency committee would then elect an emergency action leader, whose job it would be to give orders in the crisis, well, not exactly orders, as each one would be subject to a review, council discussion, and citywide vote. And this would take, she asked. Well, they've never actually had to do it yet, neither of our two violent encounters in recent history have lasted long enough, but I'd guess anywhere from a day to a month. As I've said many times, bureaucracy. So, would you mind? Gohan headed for the door. Don't worry. You're pretty sensible, the Gordian Knot solution. The what? Earth saying, don't worry. Actually, I don't understand it either. Vidal admitted. Read a history book sometime. I'm going to fight a thing. See ya. Despite this closing statement, his three traveling companions accompanied him, partly out of curiosity, partly out of boredom. It stood easily twice Gohan's height or more, an organic-looking machine sporting red panels and casings on its torso, head and limbs, a more pinkish color beneath. Green gem-like objects gleamed on its forehead, chest, forearms and knuckles. Plus 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 scanning plus plus plus. Plus 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 ID match scion plus plus plus. The machine's gaze swept from Gohan to his companions. Plus 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 unknown plus plus plus. Gohan walked confidently up to it, folding his arms. What do you want? Why'd you attack those drones and what's your intention here? It carried on walking, stopping inches away and staring down at him blankly. Wonder how strong this thing is, just like the androids, I can't sense any key. At some silent signal, the gems began to glow with an angry, burning emerald light. Gohan gasped, staggering back as if dealt a physical blow, as its power core flared to life. Whoa! I take it back, this key, it's even greater than... With speed he couldn't follow, its fist lashed out, catching him on the head and knocking him out instantly. Broly! Carissa grimaced. Did you see that? It's fast. Be on your guard. Zarbin muttered. That energy just appeared out of nowhere. Slowly its head turned. Its gaze locked on them. Plus 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 secondary threat identified plus plus plus. Plus 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 neutralize plus plus plus. MMM, this is delicious. Goku downed another mouthful of soup. This tastes like the fish my grandpa used to make when I was a kid. 
Well it should. Chi Chi grinned spooning a serving into her bowl. It is the same fish. But it's huge and carnivorous. He mumbled. And it only lives in one lake up the mountain. How'd you? Hiked up the mountain and killed it with my own two hands. Goku beamed. I love you you know that? You'd better. The things I do a ringing came from the other room. A few seconds later she returned with the phone. It's for you Bulma. Eh? Goku took the phone holding it awkwardly he'd never been too comfortable or familiar with technology. Hey Bulma. What is it? You'd better come quick. There was a tension behind her words. You're not gonna like this. Goku walked into Capsule Corp to see a projector and screen already set up in the living room. What's all this? Bulma pressed a button on a remote. Received a transmission broadcast all around the galaxy. Just watch. The screen flickered to life, immediately showing a disturbing image, a decapitated Namekian head stuck on a pole, which someone more aware of galactic current affairs would identify as Lord Slug. I trust one have your attention, a raspy voice spoke. The image zoomed out to show a sinister-looking, blue-gray face. Visible veins snaked up and down the forehead. One red eye, one white, both blank and pupil-less. A bushy mane of hair around the shoulders, but the top of the head was bald and a large mustache draped down the chin. Now if there are any scions watching I advise you not to disregard this message. It may be a matter of life or death. Observe. He indicated to his right and the camera swung around to show three figures standing behind him, Gohan, Paragus, and a third Goku didn't recognize, short and wearing traditional scion armor. All had a dark red ring around their eyes and appeared to be conscious but immobile and passive. These are the three I have gathered so far, he continued. However, I have reason to suspect more are still lurking around the galaxy, so if you can hear me, consider this a challenge. The coordinates broadcast with this message are my location. If you wish to attempt to rescue these three, if you relish a call to battle, or if you simply desire to finish what you started all those years ago, I am waiting. Any non-scion detected approaching will be shot down in orbit. Goodbye. The transmission cut out. Goku noticed he was trembling slightly. Bulma, I need a ship. Gotcha. I know you guys, I always have a spare lying around. It's actually been pretty easy replicating the one we used to go to Namek. Not now, all right? I'm going. Tilkiki. Are you mad? She'll bite my head off. Goodbye, Bulma. He strode out of the room, forcing himself not to scream in frustration. He's what? Bulma winced as the phone shook with Chi Chi's furious shout. Ah, uh, he left a few minutes ago. Sazi. You have to admit he has a good reason. Well, just tell him he'd better bring our boy home safe or I'll kick his ass from here to next week, you hear me? Loud and clear, sadly. Nail entered the room just as Bulma put the phone down. Am I going crazy or was Goku just here? Yeah, but he's kind of in space now. Long story. Bulma shrugged. Nail sighed. Perfect timing. i just detected some weird key spike in the north I was going to ask him to help me investigate. Are there any other fighters around? Yamcha's here I think. I'll call Tien and Krillin if you want though tell them where you're headed. Thanks. He headed back outside. Hey! Yamcha! What's that? You're going? Launch asked as Kayatsu finished relaying the message to her and Tien. Yeah. Dean nodded. I'm sure Nail and Bulma wouldn't ask something like this if it wasn't serious. It could be dangerous so I'm going to ask you two to stay here. Launch frowned. Yamcha's going. Silence for several seconds. Dean sighed. Yeah, point taken. Kayaatsu, do you mind staying and watching break? Can't really take her along. Okay. Kayaatsu smiled. I'm not really that keen on fighting anyway. 
You guys be careful. Sure. Launch handed brake to Kayatsu and immediately the baby started protesting loudly. Hey, hey, calm down. It's not like it's a total stranger. The crying continued. Ugh, come on. Shoo, quiet now, it's okay. Wa a a a triple a h h h h. In a burst of light, Brake's hair turned golden and stood up on end. A wave of destructive force rolled out from her body, hurling Kayatsu across the room, Brake landing heavily on the floor but not appearing to be affected. Uh. Tien scratched his head. Is that supposed to happen? I mean at such a young age. Launch shrugged, picking the struggling baby up and sitting on a nearby chair. The future break did warn us it happened early with her, that unstable genetic combination, well, I guess I'm staying here. Go get em. Right. I should get going. Tien turned and flew out of the doorway into the cold morning air. Are you gonna be okay? Kaiatsu asked Launch. I mean, even a baby super scion must be pretty strong. True. Launch growled as she wrestled with Brake, trying to keep her still. But she doesn't know how to use her strength at all, and besides, Kaioken times two. A red aura enveloped her, and she felt new strength surge into her muscles, finally letting her hold Brake easily. There. That's better. Now quit your whining and go to sleep already. I swear, next time I'm just going to leave you here and go punch someone. Precisely 46.5 hours later. Goku rushed out as soon as the ship touched down on the barren moon. Little to no life visible around him, but he ignored the scenery, heading straight for the tall chimney-like structure on the horizon. Wonder if he's there? Only one way to find out. It certainly seemed so he began to sense some key signatures as he approached, but most of them were strangely hazy, as if something was partially blocking them. He guessed those were inside. Still, seems like there's one out here, and it's familiar. Wait, that couldn't be, could it? He landed next to the building, standing a few meters behind a depressingly familiar figure. Kakarot. Vegeta turned around, smirking at him. I see you've finally decided to grace me with your presence. Where's your slightly less moronic brother? He's dead. My condolences. I'm sorry someone else beat me to it. I hope I won't be denied the same with you. Vegeta wore a heavily customized suit of battle armor, with the shoulder and leg guards removed, they always seemed to get snapped off in battle anyway, or so he'd reasoned. That's your brat he's got a hold of, isn't it? What's it to you? Goku said tersely. You're just here for the fight, aren't you? Actually, no. Vegeta frowned. Much as it pains me to say it, there is someone I care about enough to come to their rescue. What's this? He cares for somebody? Goku shook his head. Who are you, and what have you done with Vegeta? Very funny, Kakarot. But, I could never bring myself to abandon my brother, Tarbal. Oh! So that's who the third guy was. Say, he did look a bit like you, how come he survived when Frisia blew up our home planet? You really are ignorant, Tarbal was banished to the outer reaches of the galaxy, for his cowardice, low power and unwillingness to fight. In other words, not a true scion at all. Vegeta pointed at the screen on the front of the building, which portrayed a video feed of the three captive scions. What I'd like to know is what that worm Paragus is doing here. You know him? Goku shrugged. Far as I know, his son Broly saved him, Broly was the legendary Super Saiyan, which basically means he was born with a naturally huge power. Gohan killed him though. Incorrect. The voice, belonging to the man from the transmission, emanated from the tower. What? No. Goku looked up at the source of the sound. I saw it happen. There's no way he could have survived. Then you are mistaken, the voice continued. Because I am detecting the energy signal of the Scion Broly rapidly approaching his planet. He is in a large cargo freighter. Pause. Judging by the velocity and approach vector of said vehicle, I do not believe that he knows how to fly it. 
Projected impact zone, 3 kilometers east. Standby. At this point a low humming noise became audible and the two scions looked up to see a slowly growing light in the sky. Eventually it formed itself into an elongated oval shape, a common cargo ship model. As predicted it did not land so much as plummet, meeting the ground edgeways with a satisfyingly thunderous impact, before suddenly exploding and nearly deafening them. He's right. Goku said quietly. I can sense him from here, Broly survived. Well who cares? Vegeta grunted. What's the big deal with this Broly anyway? What's a legendary Super Scion? Isn't the Super Scion legendary anyway? Broly was born with the power, it's a sort of hidden genetic switch in Scion DNA, he didn't have to work for Super Scion like we did. And it gives him access to a higher form, which is what we call the legendary form. They both transformed to the first level of Super Scion as they felt, then eventually saw Broly's approach. He landed in front of them, smirking slightly. Well, it's been a long time. He chuckled. How did you survive? Goku snapped. Gohan killed you, he blasted you right out into space. Well, he should have tried harder, Broly snorted. I've always been a survivor. I floated in space I don't know how long, only kept alive by my unconscious power, the same power that saved me when Frieza tried to destroy us. Finally a ship picked me up, recognized I was a scion, and their captain decided to drop me here on the way to their destination. They were too kind-hearted for their own good, that's what's left of their ship back there. He paused. So the tuffle in there has my father? Vegeta nodded. Right. You're here to save him? From Kakarot's description of you, I wouldn't have thought you cared. I don't, but I'm going to kill the old bastard and I'll be damned if I let someone else beat me to it. Hold on. Goku interjected. What's a tuffle? Guys? Vegeta glanced at him, then back at Broly. Raditz never told you, typical, Planet Vegeta, named as I was for my father, used to be known as Plant, that was the name the Tuffles gave it. We Scions used to be locked in an unending war with them for control of the planet. Our warriors were much more powerful than theirs, but they were cultured, advanced, masters of technology, whereas we still lived in caves, the war raged on throughout the years, with neither side able to gain an advantage. Finally, a full moon, a rare event on our homeworld, caused our entire race to transform into Oasiris, and we wiped them out. After renaming the planet after my father, the king who'd led us to victory, we quickly adapted to the Tuffles' technology, unfortunately, it was not long after that that we were enslaved by Frisia. Right. Goku looked over at the tower. So this guy's one of these Tuffles? I guess you missed one. We'll see. He looks the part anyway, as does his technology. Vegeta faced the tower, shouting a challenge up to the heavens. Well, we're all here. You wanted us, you've got us. Are you going to come out and face us, or are we going to have to drag you out of there? Answer me. The giant screen showed their enemy's face again. You are correct, my name is Dr. Rai Chi, and I am the last of the Tuffle race. Well, perhaps not even that. I am but a ghost now the embodiment of my people's hatred for you, anyway. He adjusted something off-screen. You will have your battle, Scion. You will face the pinnacle of our technology, deploying Hachiak and Baby. Goku raised an eyebrow. Baby? Doesn't sound very threatening. Raichi chuckled. Merely a private joke, I once referred to the project as my baby it seemed to dislike this name and its discomfort amuses me. So the name stuck. In any case you three appear to be an overall more powerful group than the scions I'd previously captured hence why I am sending them both. Hachiak alone was sufficient for these three. All right, here they come. Goku growled as he and Vegeta entered fighting stances. Broly just folded his arms, turning Super Scion nonchalantly. Hachiak strode out of the tower's entrance, gems burning green and emitting a constant pulsing stream of ki, followed by a smaller figure, murderous intent evident in his red-framed eyes. 
Goku did a double take. Gohan, 